if you haven't already realized it's raining again here in the UK yes <laughs> once more the rain is falling it is quite windy it definitely does not feel like summer today here we go again yes we are all together again to enjoy and share our love of the English language it is English addict live from the birthplace of English which just happens to be England hi everybody this is mr duncan in england how are you today are you okay i hope so are you happy well are you happy i hope you are happy because we are all here together again live across youtube the internet and the world as well it's very exciting isn't it well maybe a little exciting not very exciting here we go again and yes we are all here together once more to share our love of English for those who don't know who I am maybe you are thinking yeah who is that strange man talking to me out of my computer screen well my name is Duncan I teach English I talk about English and that is the reason why I am here today I hope you are feeling good and very very happy even though the weather is bad it isn't a very nice day I will be honest with you we are not having nice weather outside look at that <laughs> there it is now we've had lots of rain this morning I was hoping to go outside I was not sure what the weather was going to be uh, today but there it is you can see gray skies cloudy <laughs> lots of rain it is a quite well I suppose I would call today if I had to say something that a lot of people do say when the weather looks bad you might say that <laughs> we are having unseasonable or unseasonal weather for the time of year so you might describe this as unseasonal weather for the time of year because now we are in June in fact we are coming towards the end of June we should now be having lots of lovely weather <laughs> but unfortunately we are not having nice weather here in England it was nice last week for a few hours <laughs> and then the rain came back to haunt us so that is the weather outside right now as I stand here talking to you unseasonal weather for the time of year it is a comment it is something you might bring up in conversation if the weather is normally nice at this time of year however at the moment it isn't you might say we are having unseasonal weather for the time of year just to prove that I am here to talk about English there it was a little bit of English on your screen don't forget also you can follow my live stream with captions I can't believe it Mr Duncan isn't technology amazing well, I agree with you it is pretty cool to be honest you can press C on your keyboard and you can have captions live as you are watching this at eight minutes past two UK time I don't know what time it is where you are because I'm not there you see we have so many things to show you so many things to look at today we are talking about many things first of all we are going to talk about creativity are you a creative person are you a person who is good at creating things maybe you enjoy making things perhaps you have a certain skill that you enjoy practicing 
maybe you are good at drawing maybe there is a certain hobby that you have where you create things last week someone came to our house to have a look at our kitchen floor because unfortunately part of the kitchen floor in the house has collapsed due to damp so we had a carpenter come last week <laughs> when I say carpenter I don't mean the carpenters as in the group when I was young I'd listen to the radio waiting for my favorite song when it played I'd sing along it made me smile not that carpenter it was the guy who likes to work with wood he came to look at our broken kitchen floor and he said well I can fix this for you I don't know when because I'm very busy at the moment but he did come last week to have a look and yes it looks as if we can get our kitchen floor fixed maybe within the next month I hope so talking of the kitchen I am actually in the kitchen today we are going into the kitchen this afternoon to have a look at me something I recorded yesterday making something delicious one of my favorite desserts when we say dessert we mean something you normally eat after your main meal quite often something that is sweet so that is one thing we will be doing today amongst many things so the carpenter who came to my house last week said during lockdown I haven't had much work to do so I started creating things from wood so he made some decorative plant pots made of wood and he made about 10 of them and then he realized after showing these plant pots that he'd made himself he realized that people wanted to buy them and suddenly <laughs> he was getting offers of money for people or from people who wanted to buy his wooden plant pots incredible so instead of sitting around doing nothing he decided to do something with his time and that is what he did he decided to make some wooden plant pots and he sold them as well so good news we will be getting the kitchen floor fixed over the next three or four weeks hopefully I can't believe next week it is July I really can't believe it so that is one of the questions we are asking today are you a creative person I will be giving Mr. Steve a little task later on have you ever seen this stuff here is some amazing stuff this is something that I use quite often in my studio when I'm sticking things to the wall or maybe to the ceiling this is something that is a very useful thing to have around however today <laughs> I'm going to set Mr. Steve a challenge I'm going to ask if Steve can make something from this item so you can mold this you can stretch it you can twist it you can create anything with this particular item so I'm going to see if Mr. Steve can create something live today Steve will be here in around about 15 minutes we will have Mr. Steve here on the live stream and I will be testing his ability to create things so I wonder what Mr. Steve will create with this I wonder we will find out a little bit later on and Steve has no idea he doesn't know I'm going to ask him to do this <laughs> so you might see Steve's surprised look when he real realizes that <laughs> he has to do a little bit of work during today's live stream and of course you can join in as well if you have some of this in your house 
maybe you could make something as well maybe send a photograph of the thing that you've made something that you have created yourself using this perhaps <laughs> so we are live today it's mr duncan that's me by the way also we will be talking about color idioms i love idioms sometimes we use idioms quite a lot we use them often sometimes we use them occasionally however they are always useful so today we are going to take a look at some words and phrases some idioms connected with color what else are we doing today we, well of course we have mr steve i am going into the kitchen i will show you the first part of my trip to the kitchen that i had yesterday and i did something in the kitchen i made something yesterday i did i actually created a nice sweet dessert and we will be looking at that later on oh do you remember a couple of years ago one of steve's friends gave us a plant who remembers who remembers the plant that one of steve's colleagues gave us well guess what it is back it has grown again after last year <laughs> if you remember last year mr steve decided to cut and chop some of this particular plant in half and he almost killed it however this year you can see that the dahlia so this particular plant is called a dahlia it is a plant that comes up every year and you can see the flowers are all starting to come out however last year steve got very adventurous and he decided to cut some of the roots in half which almost killed the plant so well done mr steve well done and there you can see one of the flowers has already come out looking very nice at the moment so that particular plant is called a dahlia it comes out every year however what you have to do with this particular plant you have to dig the plant from the ground you have to take it out of the ground and then you have to put it into storage during the winter so there it is the dahlia is back for those who were wondering were you wondering <laughs> i'm not sure oh we have the live chat as well not only that we have made it all the way to the end of the weekend yes it's sunday <laughs> we are here live yes right now definitely i am pretty sure we are now as live as live can be on sunday it's sunday it is the 28th of june it is almost the end of june where has it gone now i thought may went quickly however june has gone by even quicker I don't know where this month has gone it's flown by hello to the live chat nice to see you here as well oh lots of people are already here on the live chat nice to see you here with me on this sunday afternoon i don't know what time it is where you are because i'm not there i'm not hello to let's see who was first it looks as if partridge was first on today's live stream hello partridge congratulations to you you are first on today's live chat <laughs> thank you very much for joining me today i do appreciate the fact that you give your time to me it's very kind of you 
today we are looking at various things we will be going into the kitchen to have a look at me <laughs> making <laughs> some lovely sweet dessert oh by the way yesterday we went into town and we saw something quite unusual something you don't normally see in the town center here in much wenlock but yesterday we saw something very unusual would you like to have a look so i was walking along with mr steve and then suddenly i noticed that there were some horses but they were no ordinary horses they were carriage horses small horses pulling carriages and you can see there are one two three four horses and carriages and they are all driven by the people you can see there they were stopping off they were having a rest and of course they were also giving the horses a much needed break in the shade so i love the way that they left the horses in the shade so they weren't standing out in the sunlight uh, oh, look at that aren't they lovely they're they're very small that i think they might be ponies a type of pony but you can tell by the shape of their bodies they are very strong horses very strong horses and they made a surprise appearance yesterday in much wenlock town center talking of which yesterday the town was so busy so much going on yesterday as you may have heard here in the uk especially here in england we are slowly getting back to normal next week the 4th of july many of the shops many businesses many restaurants will begin opening their doors again so i'm not going to say we are getting back to normal because we are not things are a very long way from being normal however we are going to slowly open restaurants cafes bars i think also you can have your hair washed as well and cut there are many people at the moment walking around with very long hair men and women their hair has grown so much during lockdown and they haven't had a chance to actually have their hair cut so there is something else that they are waiting to do go for a drink in the local pub maybe perhaps go to the local restaurant and have a nice meal and also have a haircut not that i have to worry about that to be honest i don't have to worry about having a haircut because i don't have much hair anyway mm. hello maria oh maria i'm saying hello to maria nice to see you here valentina cory tamara hello pedro oh pedro belmont is here hello irene hello also to sassy tias wow so many people already joining me today if mohammed tamara again also satarino nice to see you here as well and palmira mr duncan i envy your coolness it is very hot and humid where i live we are having some very strange weather at the moment it's gone very cold windy wet everything we're getting everything the only thing we're not getting at the moment i suppose the the only thing we're not getting at the moment is snow we're not getting any snow at the moment although oh my goodness <laughs> surely not surely it's not snowing as well no that's just a special effect fortunately hello to saska tomorrow i will fly from mexico to savannah in the usa as second in command in a gulf stream aircraft that's amazing 
I will be on charge or in charge so you will be responsible for something if you are in charge I will be in charge of the communications I'm sure I have improved my English a lot thank you thank you Sasuke and good luck with your your flight tomorrow I hope it goes well hello Zuzika Kari oh Luis Mendez is here today hello Luis hello to everyone as well Andy oh my goodness so many people are here accent Mr Duncan aren't the good times outside in your beautiful garden it is hot there take care and be safe in your nice house well it's not hot here at the moment however it is very wet hello Sasuke who is making a guess about my dessert that I will be making in a moment in the kitchen Ooh, that is coming up apparently dahlias are very popular hello Wilson Michael Mr Duncan I am watching you live for the second time this time I am watching it with my little son David Michael who is only five years old he is watching you live for the first time so I suppose I should say hello to Wilson and also your son as well David hello I hope you are enjoying today's live stream also I have to make sure that I behave myself as well hello J Daniel our killer hello also rubber guy hello rubber guy <laughs> very interesting and also I like your little icon it looks like SpongeBob SquarePants <gasps> Mr Duncan how can you know about SpongeBob SquarePants it's another children's cartoon yes I like I like SpongeBob SquarePants although my favorite character is Squidward to be honest because he reminds me of Mr Steve they both have the same character sometimes they get very moody and upset by things so I think Mr Steve and Squidward are very similar to each other hello English with Akshard as well and also Rafa is here watching in Argentina here we go then as promised we're going to go into the kitchen something that I recorded yesterday and I thought it would be interesting to do something different so I decided to film myself making a nice dessert so this particular thing is actually in three parts here is part one but the big question is what am I going to make so here we are then we are ready to make some jelly have you ever made jelly before well if you haven't this is how I do it first of all I have to mention that everything I'm using today has been bought from the shops so nothing you see here has been made by myself for example the jelly there it is can you see the jelly that was purchased from the local shop however I have a difficult choice to make because I have orange jelly and I also have strawberry jelly as well so which one am I going to make today which one would you like me to make shall I make the orange jelly or shall I make the strawberry jelly which one do you want to see boo we are going to make strawberry jelly today so here are all the things I need to make my jelly I have my jelly mix so this is something that is solid it is something that is already made however I still have to do a little bit of preparation with this so first of all I have to open open the packet 
So I will open the packet of jelly, which is not easy to do. <laughs> do, do, do. So the first thing you will notice is that the jelly is solid. So it isn't powder. It isn't something that is powdery. It is actually solid. <laughs> I remember as a kid, I used to eat this without actually making the jelly. I used to actually eat this on its own without making it. <laughs> oh, I also need a pair of scissors. Wait there a moment. Where are my scissors? I found my scissors. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut this into little pieces. What you do is you cut each square off like this. I will show you. I do, 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 do. Bum, bum, bum. So what I'm actually doing now is cutting the solid jelly into smaller pieces. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I want the jelly to melt very quickly. So this is the first part of the process of making my lovely jelly. So there it is. It is now cut up into small pieces in my glass bowl. The next thing I need to do is heat up some water. I have half a pint of water here. So there is half a pint of water in this jug, which I will pour into the saucepan like this. Do, do, do. And then I will heat up the water. I will heat up the water. So what I have to do now is wait for the water to heat up. This might take a while. It will take a while and we will join part two of that a little bit later on. So don't go away. Oh, and also right now we have something very special coming up. Hmm. <laughs> Can you guess what it is? I hope so. Mr. Duncan. It's Mr. Steve. Hello. <laughs> oh, Mr. Duncan, here we are again. Mm. It's Sunday. It's two o'clock yes. or two thirty, and I'm with you live across the world, helping to teach you English. You, well, well, not you, but you. You've had a very busy morning as well. I noticed in the garden between the showers, because we've had a lot of rain over the past couple of days, between the showers, Steve has been outside doing some gardening. I was busy yesterday making jelly in the kitchen. We busy. Just, we just watched the first part. We will have the second part in a little while. However, we have Steve here today. We're going to look at one or two things. I'm going to get you to do a little bit of work today, Steve. I've been working hard all morning in the garden, Mr. Duncan. See, I knew I knew that you would react like this. I knew you would complain. It's a bit hot in here. Yes, well, keep that piece of paper nearby. Can you see what I've got in my hand? This is something that is very useful around the studio, something called blue tack. I'm not advertising the product, but it is something I use a lot for sticking things. However, today <laughs> we're going to ask an interesting question. I hope it is interesting to everyone. Are you creative? Are you creative, Mr. Steve? I would never see myself as creative, no. Oh, dear. I don't see myself as a creative person. Well, the thing we are going to get you to do today, I have 
this little ball of blue tack what I want you to do Steve whilst we are watching the second part of the jelly video I want you to make something from this ball of blue tack can you c construct something anything or, or mold something well nothing rude <laughs> because we do have young people watching today apparently true yes yeah, so uh, well um, even 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 older people we don't want to offend our viewers no not like last week when we were talking about pregnancy i don't think i don't think we will ever be talking about that subject ever again Hi. so here, here it is here it is steve so have a, have a feel of it hold it in your hand it's that, sticky it's very sticky but also mm. it is something you can mold as well mold there are two ways of spelling the word mold there is something that has gone rotten and quite often you will see mold growing on the surface quite often with food however mold with another spelling means you are altering or changing the shape of something you are changing altering the shape so don't do anything yet because I have something else to show everyone just to give you an idea I was going to say perhaps people would like to suggest what they'd like me to try and mold this into yes well I've made it even more interesting if you would like to make something as well if you have I don't know some of this in your house <laughs> or maybe something else that you can use maybe you could make something today as well to show how creative you are Ooh. Ooh, mr. Steve what do you think about that I'm trying to think what I could uh, what I could mold this into mm. and I would like suggestions please yes but nothing rude how long have I got to mold this into a shape well the next part of my jelly making will be around I think it's around three minutes maybe four minutes so you'll have four minutes would it be cheating if I just said a blue rock <laughs> that would be cheating would that be cheating no it, it has to be a different form it can't be the form that it's, okay. it, that it's in right. now oh, it has Ooh, to be we've got a suggestion oh okay from Al Care or care Al Care make a little tree make a little tree that's nice how long have I got did you say about four minutes four minutes we're not doing it just yet though because yes. I want to show oh, some yet I want to show something that I noticed a few weeks ago in the garden are you okay Steve I'm going to write these down I've got a tree I've now got a bird oh. uh, by soupy thank you yes there's a couple of suggestions a bird Marcia says a bird so that's two birds I'm going to whatever the highest one is uh, on things that I need to mold this into yes. I will then do yes so could, could you make a shape maybe a cube oh that's, oh, that's too easy that's too that? easy that's too easy I can do that now There we go. Ta da! That was pretty Ta -ta. good. Ta -ta. Ta -da. <laughs> That's Ta -da. too easy. Okay, then. <laughs> Model of a Corona. <laughs> no. What? Corona. We couldn't name it, could we? We couldn't name it. No, we could, we could make it, but we couldn't name it. We've got and a face, says uh, Lil. So here's something I want to show Steve before we go any further. Now, Steve is. I like to think that Steve is a creative person. <laughs> really? sometimes I think sometimes you, you have great ingenuity ingenuity do you know what that word means yes it means that I have could use my mind creatively to come up with solutions yes. to problems now here is a great example of mr. Steve and his ingenuity if I could just have your concentration well <laughs> I'm 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 distracted because accent says that I could use them as earplugs uh, so there we go I don't have to listen to Mr Duncan anymore bliss bliss I don't think that's a good idea please anyone watching please don't put blue tack in your ears just in case it goes inside and falls 
You could use it as an earplug, though. Falls into your skull. Very effective. Mm. Thank you, Accent. Good. That's a good idea. Put them in later. OK. <laughs> Sorry, I'm interrupting you, Mr. Duncan. Yes, the flow of my show has completely disappeared since Steve came on. Here we go, Steve. Take a look at this. So this is Steve's improvisation just to show how creative Mr. Steve can be sometimes when he's trying to solve a certain situation. Take a look at this. This is something I noticed a couple of weeks ago in oh, the garden. Yes. In the garden, And you will see I am moving towards the fence. Shall, in, I, say, shall I say what was why I had to be no, creative? No. Well, you can tell us that in a moment. OK, <laughs> let's let's have a look at it first. But what is it? Can anyone see what Mr. Steve has done? Can you see what Steve has actually done? <laughs> <laughs> now, don't say anything, Steve. I know you can't hold your comments back, but can you see what Steve has done here? And this is a way of making sure the fence didn't move. Now, Steve could have used a piece of wood, couldn't you? You could have used a piece of metal. But instead, <laughs> Steve, what have you done? You've, you've used a toothbrush. Well, Mr. Duncan, that turned out to be the, the best object I could find because it wouldn't fall down between. Because mm. what happens is that that fence blows around in the wind. Yes, it rattles. It moves. It moves a little. So, yeah, as you can see, I've already put some little wooden plugs in there yes. from a previous year. But that... Had, doesn't stop it from moving slightly backwards and forwards. Yes, it was still rattling. Yes, but now if I put another piece of wood in there, eventually, if you unless you secure it very well, mm. it would fall out. Yes. So I thought this sort of bendy plastic object yes. was perfect. And, you know, it's been there in a lot of winds and it has fulfilled its purpose. OK, it looks a little unsightly. It looks a bit unusual. But, well, my advice would have been, why not just take the toothbrush off the top and then just use the plastic handle? Well, you see, this was a temporary measure. A temporary measure. Temporary? Temporary. So it was temporary improvisation. This It's been like this for about two months. Well, exactly. Well, I'm hoping, you see, that the bush that I have planted next to the fence in the corner that we could see yes. uh, will grow up to completely <laughs> cover that. But I, I must admit, so, so if we ever needed proof that Mr. Steve is a very ingenious person, cre creative. Pedro supporting me. Thank you, Pedro. And so is Mama. I'll get a room. Uh, yes, yeah, so people are uh, appreciating my ingenuity. <laughs> Beatrice wants me to make an autumn leaf. Oh, I see. That's OK. Well, one vote for that. Birds in the lead so far. The bird. <laughs> the bird is it? Did something just... Oh, it was a... Yeah, that was a, that was a fly. I wonder... I was a bit distracted. You're, you're very distracted by everything, really. So that is a tiny fly that's buzzing around, and Steve is treating it as if... <laughs> a large <laughs> dinosaur has come into the room. But if you were going to make a bird, which, what bird would you make, Mr. Steve? Well, I don't think I could be that accurate. OK, then. Uh, I think if we just said bird in general. Yes. Uh, which is the winner so far, I think, unless somebody... So we've got tree with one vote. Okay. Snail with one vote. Autumn leaves with one vote. I like snail. Can, but, I, can uh, I suggest snail as well? well birds uh, in the lead. It's got two votes, Mr. Okay, Duncan. The, the people have spoken. Yes. Well, just think of, maybe just think of your favourite bird, your most favourite bird, and then you can make that, perhaps. This mm. could be interesting. We are also looking at colours today, idioms connected to different colours. Okay. All of the colours that exist in the rainbow spectrum. Uh, also that. Ultraviolet. Well, I'm not sure about that. Infrared. No. OK. O only the colours that are visible. Visible. Visible, visible spectrum. Yes. OK, then. What were you going to say? Oh, yes. The snail's now got two votes. Yes. Snail has two votes. Slug. I Slug. Oh, that will be easy. Oh, that's like a snail, isn't it? So yes. a snail's now in the lead. I always say that a slug is a snail that's been evicted from its house. 
<laughs> Maybe it didn't pay its rent. So there we go. We've got Bird with two votes, Snail with three votes. So those two are... So any other votes before you play your video yep. and that will decide That's what it. I try and create. We are about to have a look at part two of my jelly making and also Mr. Steve will be busy making his creation. And if you want to make a creation as well, if you want to show me your creativity, maybe you could do something and take a picture of it and maybe we can try. <laughs> I don't know how. Maybe we can show it on the screen. Oh, very technical. Bird is now three votes and snail is three votes. <clears throat> so uh, we'll have to decide. I can't make both. No. Bird, bird's in the lead with four. There are limits to Mr. Steve's creativity. Oh, no, I've just counted it twice. And the other thing you can't do, Steve, you can't <clears throat> use a toothbrush. <laughs> oh, no, bird is in the lead. Right, that's it. Bird it is. Bird it is. Oh, so Steve has to create a bird in the time that it takes for the following video to play. Here we go. Part two of the thing I did yesterday in the kitchen, Steve. I was making some jelly. And as you know, Steve, I love jelly very much and that's the reason why I was making it yesterday in the kitchen and then we will be back and we will have a look at what Mr. Steve has created so as you can see the water is now beginning to boil and we are almost ready to put the water into the bowl so we will take the boiling water off the stove and now it is nice and hot it is ready to be poured over the pieces of jelly so this is quite a simple method to be honest there are other ways of making jelly some of them very complicated some of them that take a very long time indeed but this does not take very long at all so now I will pour the water into the bowl and immediately the small pieces of jelly will begin to melt. So what I have to do now is stir the water and whilst stirring the water the jelly will begin to melt. It will start to melt and this takes a little while to be honest. So you can't do this quickly. It does take a while. You have to be very patient during this part of the process. <laughs> you can't rush or else your jelly will not come out right. You stir your jelly very slowly, very steadily. There is no need to rush. You have to take care or else you might ruin your jelly and there is nothing worse than ruined jelly no one no one wants their jelly ruined <laughs> fortunately the water is very hot so it doesn't take long for the pieces of jelly to dissolve so that's what I'm doing at the moment. I am dissolving, dissolving the pieces of jelly in the hot water. As I said, there are two parts to doing this. This is basically the first part. And once all of the jelly pieces have melted, what I have to do next is add some cold water. So what I want to do now is actually make the jelly go cool. I want it to cool off very quickly. It will take about one hour for this to cool off. So I'm almost ready to add some cold water. And here it is. I've already prepared my cold water. Once again, you put around half a pint of water in there. 
Do, do, do. Okay, I think we are ready to add the cold water. So you don't need to rush, just pour it in very slowly. And that's it. That is all you have to do for now. So the next stage is just to leave this jelly, you have to leave it to go cool. However, it will not go hard. It will not set until I have put it in the refrigerator. However, there is also one more thing I have to do. And that is the thing we will be doing in the next part of today's Kitchen Adventures with Mr. Duncan. There it is. The jelly is now ready. It will stand for approximately one hour. And then after that, we will come back in around one hour. And hopefully by then, the jelly will be cool. And then I can add something else, something very special. Well, we're back on, Mr. Duncan. We are back on. Yes, I've nearly finished. I've nearly finished. Yes. Let's have a look what you've made. Here we go. Okay, Ready? Then. Yes. Wow, that's amazing. That's that, not bad, is it? That's, Just from Blue Tack. That's so realistic. Not only that, but I, be I believe this this model you've just made actually. Yes. It's. It sings as well. That's incredible. No, of course not. This is not the thing that Mr. <laughs> Steve made. Shall we have a look at what Mr. Steve made? So this is this is the bird that Mr. Steve made. Everyone suggested this. They said, Mr. Steve, can we please have a bird? So that's what you've done. Let's have a look. We will have a look at Mr. Steve's attempt at making a bird. There we go. That is my blue tack bird. Okay, I've, got, I've taken a picture of it as well. Here we go. So this is Mr. Okay. Steve's bird. Look at that. Oh. That is amazing, Steve. I must admit, you've got all of the detail there. Every, every little detail. Look, even the, even the, the eyes look. Hello, how are you? Hello. Look, that is incredible. So I don't think it's a bad attempt. You even you even have the eyes. Look. I even have the eyes, of course, Mr. Duncan. I'm an artiste. Wow. The uh, the Tate Modern uh, awaits. So if we ever needed evidence that Mr. <laughs> Steve is creative, this is it. That's amazing. So there it is, as requested by everyone out there. A bird, and there it is, Mr. Steve. Your creativity will live forever and ever so congratulations steve well done he thank did you it. thank you he delivered. applause you did would you like some applause oh, awards okay, <laughs> i think a five-year-old child could have done that mr duncan <laughs> okay well <laughs> congratulations anyway <laughs> congratulations steve what shall i do with it now mr duncan <laughs> don't tempt me don't tempt me. I shall turn it into ear defenders. OK, ear then. Yes, yeah, stick them in your ear. Or even better, you can stick stick it in your mouth. Ooh. What type of bird do you think it is? I don't know. It looks like... Actually, it looks more like a dinosaur bird. Do you, yes. Do you, do you remember the pterodactyl? Well, you probably don't remember them because they weren't around when you were born. But, yes, that looks a little bit like a pterodactyl. Or maybe... Uh, a house martin, maybe a house martin flying around. When we first moved into this house, Mr. Duncan, we discovered large amounts of blue tack being used to prop up 
parts of the house hold up things even even part of the curtains on the stairs in the house were yes. actually fixed in place with blue tack blue with tack this particular product uh, the previous owners used blue tack as building material in this house yes so when things started to fall to pieces what they would do <laughs> is just put blue tack this yes this product when we moved here we found this stuff everywhere all around the house the previous owners had used lots of this they used it to repair cupboards yes everything and things like that and, and pin back curtains everywhere we looked everywhere we looked there was blue tack yes blue. on the stairs they used to fill in gaps with it I, lazy I, I started to wonder how much of this house consisted of blue tack and how much of it was actually brick <laughs> I wasn't sure at the in the end anyway have you made something nice and special and creative where you are have you made something nice oh Argentino says perfect bird perfect <laughs> I well you see I'm not I am creative in some ways but not artistically mm. mind you I don't know I, I'm not very good I couldn't draw pictures mm very well I don't think some people have the ability to do certain things maybe drawing I used to love drawing when I was young a lot but I suppose creativity can be many things some people say that that I am creative because of my English lessons so creativity takes on many different forms so it isn't just about being able to draw maybe you can build something create something I mentioned the carpenter that came last yes. week he was he was making wooden plant pots and it turned out that people were so interested in his creations they actually bought them he sold them can you believe it <laughs> yes he was uh, in lockdown have you probably have you explained this maybe? I have that's fine I won't go over it again I've told the whole story some people are creative with spreadsheets on a computer yes. maybe at work if you you know you're boss asks you to solve a problem uh, then you become creative and maybe you save money with mm. the company by some new efficient way of doing things uh, it's not just about being artistically creative it's solving problems yes. creating something from nothing new yes. opportunities saving money whatever it is like your toothbrush like my toothbrush mm. Mr. <laughs> Mr Steve sometimes has some very interesting ways of solving problems I think so we are going to talk about color idioms what is your favorite color Mr Steve green green it's always been green yes I've always liked the color green I think I like blue I do like blue quite a lot the reason why is I suppose I would say on a summer's day when there are no clouds in the sky you will see blue sky above you so yes I like that I, I always so. used to uh, go for green sweets anything that was green hmm. if there was a green sweet in a packet of boiled sweets for example I'd always go pick out the green ones yes if I why. if I have jelly babies have you ever tried jelly babies they are gorgeous however I always leave the green ones I don't like green jelly babies my favorite ones are, are the black currant ones that they're, they're very dark dark red and they are gorgeous and also the black ones as well I do like black jelly babies do you like black jelly babies uh, I wouldn't say no oh, okay, I then. wouldn't say no so, I mean you know so both of us would have any color except green no I like green really I don't yes, like the I like the green I don't ones. know why I don't like green yes. jelly babies I don't I don't definitely know. I don't know why. I don't really like the black ones so much. No. I don't like the taste of them. Okay, then. Uh, yellow ones, red ones. There's something about a black sweet. It just feels a bit, I, I don't know. I don't like eating a black sweet. I don't mind. Mind you, black jacks, they were nice, weren't they? Sort of hard sweets mm. that may, made your cut it made your tongue go black they were they were licorice licorice they were yes. oh yeah they were lovely yes mr steve <laughs> likes those okay then maria maria says i like the color black black is 
I suppose certainly with fashion we often refer to any color that comes along in fashion as the new black because quite often you will find that black is the standard color of most fashion over the years black never goes out of fashion when we are talking about any, Beatrice says any, any type of clothing oh yeah I finished the sentence now Steve Beatrice said that uh, green was her mother's uh, favorite color oh I see it's just friendly isn't it green if you like green it's a friendly color it's life it's vigor mm. it uh, it's non-aggressive you might say it's an eco color blue like the sea green like the grass yes yes I suppose it's so. uh it's an innocent color yes see if red is an aggressive color or orange is quite good uh, yes if red because they have discovered that if you look at certain colors they will change your the, your mood oh so if you show people red colors mm. then they tend to get slightly more aggressive oh I see uh, if you show people blue or green they sort of it calms the mood hmm. down well that's what they often have in TV studios or places where a person has to relax before performing quite often they will have some green in the room maybe some plants and that's the reason why they call it the green room oh. ah. so it is where the performer or the artist before they go on stage can relax before they have to put on their performance well that's me I'm a relaxing person I like green What's your favourite colour, Mr Duncan? Yes, uh, blue again. Blue, 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 yes. <laughs> I've yes, already said yeah. blue. <laughs> I'm not sure that you did. I don't remember that. No. <laughs> uh, blue, interesting. Yes. Blue. You can attribute uh, personality types to colours mm. as well. well. Maybe not go into that, but uh, you can describe someone as a, as a blue person or a red person or a green person or a yellow person. Oh, I see. OK, then. The psychological yeah. profiling. I think, I, think we'll, uh, uh, I think we'll end that part of the topic of course I like well, purple interesting I like purple as well Steve purple is a nice color even though people say that this tie is pink it isn't pink it's purple this is not a pink tie it's purple well it's nearly pink <sighs> don't you start <laughs> well there are lighter shades in there see, aren't there. there. see it, it matches see this matches my my little logo oh. you see so that is purple and my tie is also purple oh no I I don't I disagree Mr Duncan I disagree I'm going to take the contrary view why does that not surprise contrary me contrary view that's a word for you yes okay then that's a good oh, word to explain it no oh, okay. here are opposite <laughs> contraire yes opposite. a person who always contradicts they always say the opposite to what you say so you say up they say down you say go in and I say go down you say smile and I say sulk you say jump up and down and I say skulk oh that rhymes that is actually a poem that I've made up but if you're in a debate if you're debating with somebody talking about a subject yeah. and somebody takes the opposite view to you mm. you can um, if they do it deliberately you say they're being contraire, contrary. Mm. Yes. A deliberately taking the opposite view. A contraire person is a person who always takes the opposite view. I think it comes from, I think it's from the French language, actually. Contraire. Sounds very French. Contraire. Okay, then. Very good. So, colours. <laughs> Sorry? Integra says, uh, uh, there used to be a car called an Integra, Honda oh. Integra. Oh, yes. You're, you're named after a car. I wonder what the name means. It must mean something. Well, it Maybe it's integrated. Maybe it's all very well put together. Well put together. Or you have integrity. Yes, ah, integrity. So integrity. I'm about to sneeze, by the way. Excuse me, wait there. I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> Oh dear, I, I apologise for that. I think I'm going to sneeze again, Steve. Bless you.
<laughs> this is what I have to put up I, with all day, every day. I said to Steve, I've turned the microphone off. Well, I don't know why you bothered. And then you carried on talking. Well, <laughs> people can hear you sneeze. I could have carried on talking. I, only... I don't. I do not want to sneeze in anyone's ear. It's very bad manners. As I was saying a few moments ago, before I started sneezing my head off, we are looking at words connected with colours. I think that's a very nice subject, to be honest. So let's have a look, shall we? They're all colour idioms. And look at that. You can see I've even made the letters look like different colours. I've put so much effort into that. What do you think of that? Amazing. Or How not? long did that take you, Mr Duncan? About 38 seconds. Wow. 38 seconds of my life was spent making making that. That's worth a donation, Mr Duncan. It's worth something. <laughs> it's worth a lie down on the bed. So, Rosalia, what is the meaning of vindicate and mediate? Well, they are very different words. Meditate. Me meditate. Yes. Well, they're, they are completely different words. They have yes. no connection whatsoever. Meditate means relax. And what was the other word, Steve? Vindicate. Vindicate. A person who has been vindicated. What, what are you doing? I'm meditating, Mr okay. Duncan. I'm meditating. I'm not sure what Relaxing. it is. Relaxing. Vindicate, sir. What yes. Do, what do you think? If you if you're vindicating something, you're uh, you're assessing it for its 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 um, honesty, its mm. uh, integrity. Yes. Aren't you? So uh, you could say I've been vindicated. You might you might have said that uh, something would happen. Mm. If uh, and then it does happen, and then you can say, "You see, I was telling the truth. I yes, was vindicated." That's it. So I suppose you've been proved wrong or proved right as well. So maybe yes. quite often, if if you've been accused of something, you might be investigated, and then you'll be vindicated because yes. you didn't do it, and you were saying you didn't do it all along. You've been vindicated. I like that. Very nice. <laughs> So here are some words, Steve, connected with colours. Isn't that lovely? Some lovely. We like colours. We love colours. There are so many pretty colours. A couple of days ago, we had a rainbow over the house. There was a lovely rainbow. So here we go. The first phrase to whitewash something. Right. Whitewash. Whitewash. Now, quite often, many years ago, people used to paint the outside of their buildings. Do you know why? Was it to reflect the heat of the sun? Yes. In many hot countries, you will often find whitewash is a kind of paint, something that is put on the outside of a house to keep it cool when the sun is shining on the house. So you never want to paint your house in a dark colour no. because it will absorb the heat. So if you live in a hot country, your, your house will get incredibly hot but the thing about whitewash is that it will come off in the rain mm. it's temporary yes and if you've got a greenhouse uh a glass house or a greenhouse where you grow plants mm -hmm. then if you put whitewash over the windows it reduces the amount of energy from the sun the heat going into in, into the greenhouse yes it is used as a kind of block to block, block. The, the sunlight or the heat from affecting your house. And How it is very thin white paint, isn't it? Yes. It's just white paint diluted very much. However, however, whitewash as an idiom means to cover something up. You try to distract people away from discussing or looking at a certain topic or subject. You try to cover it up. You whitewash the situation. So in politics, we often hear this when a politician is trying to hide something or cover something up. Maybe they publish a report uh, that that doesn't really go into great detail about the thing that has happened. You might say that they have whitewashed that incident. The yes. thing that happened has been whitewashed. It has been painted over. It has been whitewashed. So you still hear this particular phrase used, don't you, quite a lot? It's a whitewash. Yes. 
so the whole thing has been whitewashed it is a whitewash the facts have been obscured uh nobody can really tell what's going on no. people that did know that the answers to things have probably been paid off yes or they've been silenced in some way okay <clears throat> So that the true facts can't come out. The truth. It's a whitewash. The truth is hidden. And so you have a whitewash. Yes. I like, I like. So that's using the word white. Covered up. Covered up. To cover something up. To, to make sure it does not get discovered or found. People are coming up with all sorts of uh, idioms. Oh, OK. Colours. Well, I, like I do have some that. here. <laughs> Let's have a look at the ones I'm doing. First of all. And Steve is going to write, I'll write them down, write them down. By the way, I was very impressed with Mr. Steve's bird. Did you like he actually did make that? I, I did. I was I was quite blown away by your creativity. Here's another one, Steve. Oh, sorry, Mr. Duncan. Uh, Aswin KS has used an example there of when to use whitewash. I tried to whitewash the mistake which I had made. Yes. You try so you, to yes. You try to whitewash something. You made a mistake and you try to cover it up. Whitewash. You try to cover something up. Here's another one. Oh, I like this one. This is another phrase that's used quite a lot. If you describe something as a grey area, a grey area, something that you might be discussing that cannot be concluded completely, you can't come. To a clear conclusion about something so maybe you are discussing a certain situation maybe politics maybe something that's in the news and perhaps there are two sides to the argument maybe there are two sides to the argument however both sides seem inconclusive you can't actually come to a conclusion so you might describe something that cannot be concluded or something that can't be expressed clearly as a grey area between two subjects or maybe two opposing views. A thing is a grey area. Or controversial. Hmm. Might be a controversial topic to talk about. Hmm. And somebody might say, well, that's a bit of a grey area. Hmm. There might not be defined rules around that particular hmm. subject. So may, maybe a subject that you can't just say, this is how it is. This is how it is exactly. You can't say that. Some subjects, you can't come to a conclusion about it. So instead, you will say, yes, we can't really say whether that, whether that is right or wrong. It is a grey area. Yes, it's like pronouncing the word either or either or scone and scone mm. you might say is it either do you pronounce it either or either yes and you might say well it's a bit of a gray area nobody really knows there are many gray areas in the english language where one group of people say one thing and then another group of people will pronounce maybe a word in a different way you might say mm, it's a bit of a gray area there isn't any conclusive uh, result tread carefully you might you might say yes it's a bit of a yes you might be trying to I mean not just in 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 English language but in everyday situations mm. as well uh, I mean something that is I mean the opposite to that you're going to talk about the opposite to that you, you uh, can mention it if you want uh, so the opposite to that is you could say something is it, it's black it's definitely it's, it's a black and white subject yes so the things are clear it's clear if something is black and white there are clear rules mm. so a traffic light what's the rules around a traffic light if it's red you Ooh. stop if it's green you go that's black and white yes, that's it. not a gray area there's no there's nothing for discussion there no. well it, law is a good one yes law in law things are often black and white there is right and wrong so quite often in law there there isn't a gray area in law there might be sometimes certain types of law might have gray areas however we often think of law law and order as being black and white those divides are very clear but of course if somebody if the evidence was inconclusive 
mm. about somebody, say the murder had been committed uh, and you'd got all the evidence, you've got a picture of somebody, a photograph of somebody stabbing somebody to death, for example. OK, then. You've got all the evidence, you've got the murder weapon, the f fingerprints, everything. You know it's definitely that person. It's black and white. That's it. So especially if you have to come to a conclusion about whether someone committed a certain crime, you would yes. say it is black and white. It is clear that that person did the crime. But if you didn't have all the evidence, you only had some evidence, you could say it's a bit of a grey area, mm. we're not sure. By the way, the word grey here is actually British English, so that's the reason why it is spelled differently. It is not a spelling mistake. And a lot of people will say, Mr. Duncan, you've spelt it wrong. This is the British English. In American English, they will spell this word with A. But in British English, we use E. Grey. Grey. Cory says, can you be the black sheep in the family? Yes, the black sheep of the family, using the word, are one of the many colours that exists here's another one <laughs> i like this somebody one. who somebody who's uh who's who's it's rare so to get a, a an actual sheep that's black is very rare mm. you don't see many of them they're usually white yes so if you get some if you get a black sheep uh in the family but it normally refers to somebody who's behavior is not very good well a bad, it? a bad person, a bad person and, and you, you might actually say that at the moment we are talking about the use of certain words especially when we talk about black and white at the moment so this is a very topical thing so the black sheep of the family is a negative thing they are using the word black in its negative sense which might may or may not disappear over the next few years. So people might not say black sheep in the future. It might be a phrase that slowly disappears as as our attitudes change over time. We are talking about colour idioms. Oh, Steve, here's a nice one. I like this word. Oh, in the pink. You are in the pink. Like your tie. My tie, <laughs> my tie is purple. It is not a pink tie. It is a purple tie. Can, can everyone, please? This is a purple tie. But there is pink in it, Mr. Duncan. I'm sorry. I have to disagree. It's purple. Look, it matches the... At the top, that is purple. You see up there? Purple. It's borderline. Purple. Borderline, which means <laughs> it's not quite there I, I thought you were going to say it's a gray area <laughs> yes <laughs> pink this is definitely pink i am saying it's pink sorry it's not pink <laughs> yes yes to duncan <laughs> <laughs> I, this is purple this is not a pink tie it's a purple tie it's purple i think you're colorblind mr duncan yes. colorblind that's it or else prince Prince was a very big fan of purple. He sung all about purple. Purple rain. Oh, there we go. Purple rain, purple rain. A purple rain, purple rain. A bit repetitive. <laughs> he could have said pink rain, but then I don't think it would have had quite the same effect. I don't want to be your weekend lover. Ooh. Okay. Here's a line from that song. Good. That's... <laughs> That was both fascinating and scary in equal amounts. In the pink, what does it mean if you are in the pink? You, it means you are feeling great. You feel happy. You feel well. Your spirits are up. Your, your health is good. You can breathe in the fresh air. You can go for a walk. You feel in the pink to have good, strong health means you are in the pink are you in the pink today mr duncan i'm always in the pink i'm feeling very much in the pink today going back to the color white uh karim says a white lie or have you got that one coming up i haven't got that one no white lie that's a good one well done a white lie is well it is when you say something that is dishonest or untrue however you do it because you are trying to stop a bad situation from occurring or maybe you are trying not to hurt 
another person's feelings. Yes. A so, wh white lie. So, for example, you might see a friend and they have put on weight, for example, during the lockdown. Ooh, OK. And you might say, ooh, you look really good. Have you lost weight? You've lost weight, haven't you? They haven't. But you're telling a white lie yes. in order to protect their feelings. See, now I think my example is maybe maybe the wife has just bought a new dress. Yes. And she comes down the stairs and she says to her husband, what do you think of this dress? Do you like it? Now, the husband thinks, hmm, if I say yes, I like it. She'll be happy for the rest of the night if I say no. I don't like it. She might not be happy for the rest of the night. Yes. So to stop her from being hurt or to hurt her feelings, the husband might say it looks lovely. It looks very nice, even though it doesn't really suit his wife. But he doesn't want to hurt her feelings. He doesn't want to make her feel hurt by his harsh words. So instead, he says, your dress looks lovely. It looks lovely. It's it's lovely. It's very nice. It's a little white lie. It's a white lie. But at least tonight he will be able to get through the whole evening without being shouted at or nagged at. So, yeah, pretty good. Well done, Mr. Duncan. Was that was that was that a, a good? <laughs> Are we coming on to the colour blue? Of course, it can be used the other way round. Maybe the wife might say something nice to the husband. Unlikely. To keep him quiet. Yes. So it works both ways, you see. Both ways. Blue. There we go. We've got quite a lot for blue suggestions for people. Blue. Let's have a look at another one now, shall we? So we had in the pink. Here is... Oh, one is seeing red. A person is seeing red. Seeing red. If you see red, it means your temper is becoming fiery. You are starting to become angry. Maybe you are seeing red. You are starting to become annoyed. Something is making you feel angry. One is seeing red. You see red. You see red. Do you know why we say that? Is it to do with the blood flow? Yes. Apparently, when you get angry, apparently everything becomes hazy and red. It's almost as if there is a red mist over your eyes. Well, that's what they say. The red mist, hmm. don't they? If yes. you're getting angry, ooh, the red mist descended, hmm. uh, particularly when you're driving the car and somebody annoys you on the road we've all experienced this unexplainable uncontrollable anger the red mist descends yes mr the steve same as uh, saying you're seeing red mr steve has seen the red mist in his car many times many many times many times koawa says red is the blood colour. Yes, I suppose so. A lot of people say that there is a red mist when they become angry. They, they, they can't remember what they did because they lose their temper. They lose control of their emotions. It's incredible, but true. Yes. So a person is seeing red. One more, and then we are going to have the final part of my jelly making. Lewis says red rag to a bull. Oh, that's a very good one. I like that one, Lewis. Thank you very much. That gets a big thumbs up from me. Thank like you, Lewis. Red rag to a bull. That's a good one. Something that creates anger in another person to bring about the state of anger in another person. It is something that you do that makes the other person angry. It is like a red rag to a bull and normally people know that there's a certain subject area or something that really annoys somebody and uh, 
if you talk about that, somebody might say, well, don't say that. Mm. That's like a red rag to a bull to him yeah, that's, that's or it. to her. That's it. It's normally something that people know will make a certain people person angry <laughs> or you can wind them up I've got a good, very easily. I've got a good example, Steve. Maybe Brexit. Yes. So maybe there are people who get very angry when they talk about Brexit. They might say, don't mention Brexit. It's it's like a red rag to a bull. He will start shouting and screaming because he has very strong feelings about that particular subject. Yes, a good one. Here's another one. And then we are going to have a break. Oh, what? Sorry, Mr. Duncan. Uh, Mercedes. Nice name, by the way. Being caught red handed. Yes, being caught red handed. Yes. You have been caught in the act. Or maybe you have given away lots of clues to the fact that you have done something bad or committed a certain crime. You have been caught red handed quite often as you are actually committing the crime. That's it. You're, you're stealing something from, from a shop mm. and uh, somebody sees you and you're caught with that object in your hand. Mm. You're caught red handed. And of course, nowadays, because we have closed circuit television and cameras in shops you can be caught red-handed after the crime has been committed so you can actually get away with it you can steal some jewelry from a shop and escape and get away and you think you've got away with it however when they watch the security video they see you doing it and we can see your face so even in the video you have been caught red handed. They have seen you actually doing it. Somebody breaking into a house. The police come along and catch them in the house, stealing from your house. They're caught red handed. Mm. But it doesn't have to be serious crimes. It could be your child at home. Mm. You might have said to them, now I've baked some cakes. OK. Uh, and I do not want you to eat them until tea time. Mm -hmm. You must not eat these cakes until after the main meal and then you go out of the room and you come back in and you see your child reaching up with his hand or her hand inside the the cake tin to pull one out you can say you're caught you're red-handed mm. or, so may or maybe they, they have cream and cake all around their mouth so they've just finished eating it but you still catch them doing it you have caught them red-handed because they still have things around their mouth, pieces of the cake around their mouth. Talking of food, Steve, please let me do this, Steve, please, because we're, going, we're going to run out of time. Mario, we are we are going to talk about the colour blue in a minute. Yes. So and I've got yours down here. We have blue coming up next. Yes. So Ooh. here it is now. Look, once in a blue moon, something that doesn't happen very often, something that occurs rarely or only at a certain time it only happens once in a blue moon it means something that hardly ever occurs something that hardly ever happens hardly ever happens so I suppose you might say that you get snow in June <laughs> yes well, you might never see snow in June but in some countries, you might get some snow, even if normally you don't have snow. You might have snow once in a blue moon. So it happens, but not often. It is a very rare occurrence. It happens once in a blue moon. We are now going to take a break. I can have a drink of water for my can little... Can I mention Mario's example first? Because he's been putting that up several times. OK, then. Uh, about the colour blue. OK. Uh, something that is blue chip. Blue chip. That sounds like something to do with shares. A blue chip company, yes. for example. OK. It means a, a, a really good, respected, honest, reliable company. Hmm. A blue chip investment is an investment which you can trust it's one of the best mm. a blue chip investment if you're investing in shares it means that it's really the best mm. so maybe investing in apple or microsoft would be examples of blue chip companies okay then uh 
Exactly. So uh, uh, maybe a firm of solicitors Mm. might be described as a blue chip company because they're very reliable. Mm. Uh, Nothing's 100 percent, but they are at the top of their game. They are the highest performing, reliable, honest companies that you could invest in. Something that's renowned, renowned, something that is renowned for being good. Yes. or successful okay Steve mm. here we go this is the final time that we're going to look in the kitchen this is part three of so many examples of idioms I'll write them down my jelly adventure yesterday I was in the kitchen yesterday and I was making some jelly and here now is the third and final part mm. okay it looks as if the jelly has now cooled down it is ready for the next stage the next stage is a very interesting part of today's jelly making (laughs) something that i like to add to my jelly to make it extra special Mm. So here is the thing that I'm going to add to my jelly. These are lady fingers. I love the name of this particular type of food, lady fingers. They are small pieces of sponge covered with sugar. And what I normally do is I normally put some lady fingers in my jelly. So before I put the jelly in the fridge, I have to add my lady fingers to the jelly. And then as it sets, as it begins to solidify, these will become part of the jelly. So I just place them in like so. And you will notice it first, they float on the surface. But eventually, they will start to sink to the bottom. I always like to put lots of lady fingers in my jelly, so I'm going to put another one in. You just simply break them up into small pieces and place them in the jelly like that. Okay, I'm going to put one more in there. Just one more, and that's it. That is now ready. (laughs) Do you like the way I'm putting my fingers into the jelly? Don't worry, I've washed my hands. They are nice and clean. So there it is. It is now ready to go into the refrigerator. My ladyfinger strawberry jelly. I will see you later. Voila! There it is. It is now ready to be eaten. Look at that. Some lovely strawberry jelly with lady fingers. And as you can see, the sponge has now absorbed the jelly and the whole thing has become solid. Of course, you can't have jelly without custard. Oh yes. So later on today, I will be having some jelly and custard as a little treat after my hard work presenting today's live stream. <laughs> yes, I will. I will be enjoying. I will be enjoying my jelly and custard and maybe even a tea cake as well. Well, jelly, of course, represents about 50 percent of your diet, doesn't it, Mr. Duncan? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love jelly. I don't know why. I know it seems 
infantile I know it seems like I am <laughs> a child but I do love jelly with some sponge lady fingers by the way Sergio said I wouldn't be surprised if they are real lady fingers I don't know what you're you what, what are you saying there what are you saying Arr. yes lady fingers or sponge fingers yes uh, now we've got quite a few suggestions for the color blue mm -hmm. blue idioms uh, Alvised has said a blue Monday blue Monday a okay blue then. Monday yes so if you have a blue Monday it means you're having an unhappy time yes the because it's Monday that's it yes the start of the week people have to go to work even though at the moment many people still are not going to work but blue Monday a lot of people apparently feel miserable and sad on Monday especially Monday morning because they have to go back to work blue if you're feeling blue it just means you're feeling sad and unhappy and of course there's a whole uh, genre of music called blues mm. uh, which is sort of sad not well it's sort of it's not uplifting music it's mm. it's music it's called blues and jazz usually isn't it mm. but it's sort of melancholy I sort of it's music to sit down when you're on your own, maybe with, some, with a drink yes. and just sort of feel a bit miserable. Yes. Well, the blue, when we talk about blues music, it's often melancholic. Yes. So you have a melancholic. So melancholy. Oh, I like that word. By people, the way. people talk about their problems, their hmm. love life, things that have gone wrong in their lives. That's what blues music is. But yes, carry, carry yeah, on. That's my, my blues song. Melancholy. My blues song I'm going to sing now. I went to the shop the other day And I asked if they had any Jaffa cakes They said to me, we don't have any Jaffa cakes today They have all gone away I felt so sad because I wanted my lovely Jaffa cakes Oh, Mr Duncan, that's so sad So sad and we'd have a we'd have a, a trombone or a trumpet in the background, <laughs> yes. you know, and, and yes, anyway, or a, or a piano, or a piano, Blue Monday, or just feeling blue. Uh, we've got uh, Integra uh, said out of the blue, out of the blue, something comes out of the blue, something appears by surprise, something you weren't expecting. Maybe you get a large bill. Maybe some charge comes through your door. You open the envelope and there is a bill for a thousand pounds and you weren't expecting it. It came out of the blue. And when we say out of the blue, then we mean it just appeared out of the sky. Yes, that's what we're saying. Where did that come from? Not literally. No, not literally. It we're is not saying literally. It is an idiom. It's an idiom, uh, something that comes unexpectedly with no warning whatsoever mm. somebody might say to you will you marry Ooh, me okay then steve yeah, yeah will you marry you have to turn it down Mister. will you marry me he would totally unexpected that came out of the blue yes or uh, or, or or a job offer suddenly yes. comes a job offer you yes. weren't expecting it a promotion at work uh unexpected oh that came out of the blue or or perhaps I don't know perhaps maybe you get a lovely donation on PayPal maybe you get a lovely donation that you can send to PayPal and I will sit in front of my computer tonight Steve and then suddenly out of the blue there is a lovely donation in my PayPal oh my goodness I can't believe it it came out of the blue or you get a phone call from somebody you haven't heard from for years uh, or a letter it came out of the blue from nowhere unexpected Integra said as well uh, sorry Alvise said you can use the phrase a bolt out of the blue mm. so you can say yes it's like a bolt of lightning quite often shocking though uh, a, a bolt out of the blue something yes. that's sudden so yes it might be a bit more shocking that yes just quite like a, a bolt of lightning. well maybe a person that you know passes away suddenly and it's like a bolt out of the blue. So quite often we use that to describe something negative that yes. suddenly happened without warning. It's it was like a bolt out of the blue. Yes, because a bolt, the bolt is referring to a bolt of lightning. And uh, 
Thanks for that. And of course, in blue sky, you would not expect lightning to strike. Mm. Sometimes it does, though, from nowhere. Mm. So that's something, as you say, that's unpleasant mm. that happens suddenly. He, any, any more, Steve? Uh, we've got... Uh, uh, what have we got here? We've got... Well, see, gold... It's a colour in a way, isn't it? Gold a, is well. Gold is a type of colour. It's yeah, gold colour. What's interesting there, Steve? It's good. Actually, I'm glad you mentioned that because there are ways of describing colours that aren't actually the direct colour itself. For example, you might say gold. Well, gold is a type of bright orange or shiny orange or maybe yellow. So gold is just another way of expressing the the color yellow or maybe orange so we often see gold as orange or yellow so it's quite interesting isn't it yes and gold uh is normally seen as uh, when you refer to the color gold it's normally uh, seen as success hmm. uh if you've got a pot of gold yes uh so uh sunshine uh, has suggested the phrase a golden opportunity. Ah. So a golden opportunity, an opportunity that is 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 you just cannot resist it. You have to go for that. Yes. It's it's absolutely going to it's one hundred percent certain. It there's nothing wrong with it. You've got to go for that opportunity. Mm. A golden opportunity. Yes. There's no doubt it's, it's black and white. That will be a success if you do it. Yes. A uh, once in a lifetime opportunity, a golden opportunity to make more money, to get a better job, a better career, something like that. And Jade said uh, a golden age. Oh, we often refer to a golden age, a period of time mm. when everything was wonderful. Yes. Everyone's lives were were, were good. Uh, the 1920s often <laughs> really? seen as a why as a it? golden era. I don't know why. Because uh, sorry, the uh, yes, the 1920s. Yeah, 1920s weren't exactly that golden, by the way. They, well, they were they were seen as uh, as uh, as as a golden age, weren't was, they? Because there was that thing called the Great Depression. <laughs> well, that was the 30s. I know, but you know, the 20s. It was sure, that. Sure, is the Great Depression was the 30s? Yep, 30s. The, and uh, wasn't, wasn't the Wall, Wall Street crash? I'm sure that was in the 20s. No, it 1920. was 1930, I think it was. Oh, oh OK. Mm. Uh, and of course, the First World War had finished, 1914 uh, 18. Uh, and then nothing bad happened to the crash in the 30s. Uh, so uh, the 1920s were often seen as a, as a golden era. Of course, you can have a, a golden period or a golden age. Mm. You can have a golden period of filmmaking, can't yes, you? Yes, we, we often... 1950s. Well, we call it the golden age. The golden age of I don't, film. I don't think anyone calls it the golden period. The golden age of film. The Where golden you say age. that was, Mr Duncan? The golden age of film is often seen as around the 1950s. So we often see the 1950s, early 1960s as the golden age of yes. Hollywood. So it, it was when really people had nothing else to do but go to the cinema. So that was the only real form of entertainment besides television, which of course was still evolving. So that's the reason why a lot of people say that the golden age of cinema is normally maybe the 1950s, early 1960s, perhaps even the late the late 40s. Yes. Yes. So I think so. Yeah. But that's because many people went to the cinema because they had no other thing to do. And there was nothing else. There was no choice. There was no Internet. There were big stars and people look back sometimes with rose tinted glasses. Yes. I think we had one or two suggestions. Rose tinted glasses earlier. If you see things through rose tinted tinted glasses you always look at the world as a positive beautiful nice place even when things around you are not going well but you still see the positive things you still see all of the beauty in the world perhaps you are also misleading yourself as well yes so maybe things are not as good as you think they are and you might be accused somebody might say, say to you uh, for example you might be in a relationship with somebody and your friends all can see that that person is bad for you and they might say to you oh you're just seeing you're just seeing everything through rose tinted glasses 
that person is not good for you at all. They're going to take all your money and they're going to make you take drugs or something like that. What? Well, what you know, kind, they're, they're, that's, what kind of relationship is that? They're not going to support you. You're in love with them. When you're in love with somebody, you often see them through rose-tinted glasses. You tend to, you don't see their faults. Steve, Steve's idea of bad relationship is being forced to take drugs going back to red Sergio says that if you're in debt you're in the red ah yeah a good one I've Sergio actually, thanks for that I've actually got that one uh, oh have you right okay uh, if you're in the black the flies that's positive yes. because it means that you've got money in your bank if you're in the red it means you're uh, you haven't got money yes uh, because normally it shows up as red, doesn't it, on your bank statement? It does. Here's another one on the screen. Not that I would know. No, you wouldn't know. Blackmail. Ooh. Oh. Steve, blackmail. What do you think of when you think of blackmail? Well, <laughs> spelt that way, obviously, it means that uh, somebody is, is trying to uh, con you. Yes, they are trying to get something from you using force. We often call it extortion, extortion or blackmail. So the word extortion can be described as blackmail. Maybe you have some information about a person and that person does not want anyone else to know about it. So you say, oh, give me some money or else I will tell everyone what your secret is you yes blackmail them you use force you do something bad to another person to get them to give you money or of course information as well information it can be both ways both ways yeah. yes you might uh, uh, somebody might know for example you might be in politics mm. you might be a public figure and uh, your somebody finds out that you're having an affair with another person outside your marriage. Mm. And so they say, huh, I know you're having an affair. OK. I will go public with it into the papers unless you give me a thousand pounds. A thousand? Well, so, you know, as an example. <laughs> at so least... they blackmail you. They say they're trying to get something out of you to prevent some something that you know about. Uh, coming out into the open if you were going to blackmail someone make it more than a thousand pounds maybe a hundred thousand yeah, well it depends so. it depends what so. it is doesn't I it i suppose it depends what it is but yes if you're going to blackmail someone my advice if you are thinking of blackmailing someone i, I would start at around about a hundred thousand yeah i think so i think that would mm, yeah i think so but it could be at work for example you might you might have said something bad about the boss yes uh, and uh, it could be recorded. Yes. Or you might have sent something, a tweet or, a, or, or an email or something, and then somebody sees it, but the boss hasn't, se hasn't seen it, mm. and they say, oh, uh, right, OK, well, unless you treat me better at work, or I want you to uh, buy me a coffee every day for the next six months. OK. Uh, or I will tell the boss what you said. Okay. Or something like that. A cup, of, a cup of coffee. I want your desk. I want. I want your desk is better than my desk. If you don't let me sit at that desk, I'll tell the boss what you said about him yes. uh, in the in the meeting last week. Yes. Something like that. Blackmail. I'll tell you what. Ha I'll tell the boss about what happened last week in the toilets. Wow, Mr. Steve says Jade. I don't know what you've done, Steve, but you've done something quite amazing. Something that deserves wow. Oh, Andy said that uh, he was blackmailed by scammers. Oh, I see. Oh. Ransomware. I think maybe that's a slightly different thing. But yes, I know what you mean. They might hack into your computer and take all the information. Maybe you have a list of people who belong to your, your company or maybe their membership of your organisation. And they take all of that. But then, then they say, you have to give us one million dollars and then I will let you have all of that back you can have access to your computer or all of the names that are on your list so ransomware you yes. are blackmailing someone by withholding the information in your computer something that happens a lot nowadays right uh, it's strange actually the color black is often associated with bad things isn't it 
mm. bad events and that that's only because when it's when the when the sun goes down and it's dark everyone's scared because it's dark it's black so i think that's why quite often the color black is associated with bad things and the color white is associated with good or fortunate things just because when the sun's out when it's light human beings just like animals feel frightened in the dark because we can't see anything so that's the reason mm. unless of course you're not in debt if you're not in debt then the, then black is being in the black is is a positive thing yes here it is here's as if as if by pure magic steve and i do believe sometimes in magic <laughs> to be in the red yes if you are in the red with your bank that means you owe them money if you are in the black it means you don't owe any money you have plenty of money in your bank account you have credit so credit if you have money that is your money it doesn't belong to anyone else you are in the black however if you owe money to the bank you have borrowed a lot of money You're pointing at me on that's what Sergio said in on, the red. on credit cards maybe you are in the red in the red We've covered that mr duncan already sergio uh, yes. said it i know i didn't i didn't say <laughs> i didn't say sergio didn't say it <clears throat> strange argument <laughs> here's another one. Oh, as we mentioned earlier you might have now we often see the word black as being negative i don't know how much longer that will go on for but you might have a black mark against you yes a black mark against you now maybe if we are talking about law perhaps you are arrested maybe you've done something wrong maybe you've done something bad you might then have to go to court and face trial and perhaps you will be found guilty you will then have a black mark against you against your character because if you go to prison if you go to prison at all you have to tell people so even after you come out of prison you have to tell people you've been to prison you have a black mark against your character if you if you uh, work quite often if you are somebody who wants to get promoted but you've maybe been rude to somebody at work uh you've done something bad uh and you don't get promoted you've got a black because you've got a black mark against you for something that you said or did mm. in the past mm. Uh, and to remove that could be quite difficult. You've probably got to do quite a lot uh, to make up for that black mark. Yes. Another one, of course, is if you borrow money and you don't pay it back, you might also have a black mark against you. So yes. in the future, you won't be able to borrow money because you have a black mark. Your credit rating will be poor. So you might have a black mark against Su against your credit. Rating. Sujin says, is there a positive word related to black? I think it's just you're in the black in the bank in mm. terms of that's a financial phrase. Yes. So that's a positive one, meaning you've got money. Mm. It, it, of course, it relates to Black Friday, which is the sale that takes place just before everyone breaks up for Thanksgiving in the United States black friday and of course now even over here in the uk we have black friday so normally the run-up to christmas when the, the shops are trying to make their best profit of the year so normally that's when it happens they have black friday so everyone can spend their holiday salary in the shops here's another one a positive one for a change this is nice oh red letter day if you have a red letter day it means something good happens it means you have a nice surprise a nice thing happens you have a red letter day you have a nice thing something comes your way positive things something nice has happened oh we are having a red letter day today well you might be i'm not <clears throat> do you know where it comes from no in china and in certain other countries a red envelope will be given normally during a celebration and quite often it will have money in it or maybe a letter that is important 
and it will be sealed on the back it will have a red seal on the back ah. oh yes you see mm. anything steve there uh, uh going back to green uh, Cory said uh, to give the green light to something. Oh, yes. OK, give the green light. That's yeah. quite a way back. Cory, I hadn't forgotten. Um, yes, if you give the green light to something, that means you're saying, yes, you can go ahead with that, mm. whatever it is. Wait, I'll on. give the green light to that. That's it. It's on the screen now. Just. Oh, yes, there we go. So it's just like saying just like a green light in a traffic light. Green means go. Mm. Uh, so. It could be a project at work. It's always mm. a project at work. And you submit your plans to your boss. And he says, go ahead. I'm giving you the green light mm. on that. Yes. Maybe you, you can, can give it. Maybe you can give me the green light by, by giving me a like. Look at that. So, ah. so perhaps you can give me a like. You can give me the green light with a thumb. Or you can subscribe as well. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel as well. So go on, give me the green light. Give me your approval. We are going in a moment. I can't believe we've been here for nearly two hours. A busy one today. My stomach's rumbling. We had a little bit of creativity from Mr. Steve and his amazing bird that he made right here in the studio. I think that's pretty amazing. It really does look like a bird. I don't think it will ever fly, Mr. Duncan. Black market, I says Tamara. It's a woodpecker. Oh. <laughs> Mr. Duncan, you will get a black mark if you keep doing that. So, yes, we will be going soon. A couple of more. Oh, what about this then, Steve? Using the word colour. So color zone, how oh. would you how would you actually describe that if we talk about a color zone? I don't know, Mr. Duncan. I don't really know. I haven't really come across that expression before. When we talk about a color zone, it can be any place or any situation where a color is used to show something you can do or can't do. For example, an airport. So you might see. Oh certain colors used to show maybe places where you can park your car and also places where you can't park your car so a color zone is a general term for a color that is being used to give you information maybe at an airport or maybe somewhere on the road where you can't park your car so you might see red lines on the road that tell you you can't park there or maybe you might see green lines outside an airport that means you can wait there or maybe you will see yellow lines on the road here in the UK we often use yellow lines on the UK in the UK and on the roads here to show that you can't park in a certain place so that's it so a color zone. A color zone in London. They have lots of color zones, places where you have to pay charges. If you want to drive into certain parts of London, you have to pay charges. They have color zones. Have you seen another one there? Ari Hassan, uh, white flagged. Oh, if something um, is, is 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 white flagged. Hmm. If you give a white flag to something, it means you are approving it. Yes, you are approving. So, for example, a lot of the music that I use on my videos and on my live streams, a lot of that music has been white flagged. So it means that I am allowed to use it. So my YouTube channel has been white flagged. It means you can use that music and you are free to use it. Something we haven't had, which I'm surprised, is green with envy. Oh. If you are green with envy, hmm. it means you are envious of somebody, uh, but so badly envious that it sort of takes over you. And, hmm. and people say that, don't know why, I'm, I'm sure I 
did know why where that phrase comes from but if you're green with envy it just means you're very envious of somebody mm. they might have a new car and you can't oh he's got that new car and your partner might say oh you're green with envy well it's jealousy jealousy that's mm. right it's it's a form of extreme envy mm. there it is on the screen oh you had it all along mr duncan yes you forgot no I, I just hadn't got around to showing it it was on my list you see it was lovely so am i going to go make the tea cakes it's almost time to say goodbye i can't believe that we have come to the end of today's live stream however don't feel blue ah. don't go off in a black mood don't feel down don't feel glum and gloomy there is no need to do that because i will be back on wednesday yes i'm back on wednesday for those who are wondering you can catch me on sunday wednesday and friday from 2 p.m uk time so in fact i am back with you on the first of july wednesday is the first of july wow yes so i will see you on wednesday this is the last live stream of June 2020. However, oh. I will be with you on Wednesday. Wednesday is the 1st of July, Steve, a new month. I hope the weather will improve as well. OK, Mr. Duncan, well, I've enjoyed being here with you today. Thank you very uh, much. We're going to have a cup of tea and a tea cake, a little <sighs> snack. And then I'm going to go back out into the garden. Oh, you're going to do some more work. Yes, I filled the green bin. OK, the recycling bin is full to the brim, uh, so I can't put any more in that. But I've still got work to do. OK, so then. I'd like to say goodbye to everybody. It's nice to have been with you today and look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you, Mr. Steve. <coughs> Mr. Steve has now left the studio i will see you on wednesday i hope you've enjoyed today's live stream lots of different things today we were talking about being creative i wonder if anyone has sent me a photograph of their creative things we might have a look at those on wednesday if we have time also don't forget i'm back with you on wednesday as i mentioned 2 p.m uk time the usual time on wednesday it will be the first of july a brand new month what will the new month have in store who knows i don't know i have no idea maybe there will be some nice surprises in july who knows you just never know Thank you, Rosa. Thank you, Tamara. Thank you, Sujin. I wish that you can stay in the pink, Mr. Steve. <laughs> That's very kind of you. I will pass on your kind wishes to Steve. Thank you very much for your company today. I hope you've enjoyed today's live stream. It's been different. It's been different. We had some jelly making. We had some color idioms. We had some horses. We had Mr. Steve's magic toothbrush. <laughs> and of course, you can watch this live stream again. It will be available on my YouTube channel forever and ever and ever. And also there will be captions later on as well. This is Mr. Duncan in the birthplace of English saying thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed today's live stream. And of course, until the next time we meet, which will be on Wednesday, you know what's coming next. Yes, you do. Until then, take care. Stay happy. Stay upbeat. Keep that smile on your face and I will see you soon. And of course. Ta-ta for now.